Hey, YouTube friends and family. Again, I hope all of you are doing great. And it's so good to see you here. I want to share a real quick thought with you. Something that just ran through my mind. With all the things that are going on around us, sometimes we need just a little boost of everything's okay. Through our eyes and connected with our hearts, beauty is truly all around us. Among the darkness, the little lightning bug shines and leaves us all in awe. Not unlike the skies above us, though we see trails that make no sense, there's always that little piece of blue that peeks through. The flower that breaks ground in the war-torn earth beneath our feet, reaching up for the glory of the sun. Look and feel, dear friends, Love is here, beauty is there, connect the two, that's all we need to do, this is our world. That's the end of, of my thought for you today, very short and quick. The video message that I wish to share here today is for Mr. Obama. So if you're bored with political nonsense and tired of the misleading and often deceptive messages that are thrown in our faces daily, you might want to close this video out and move on to someone else's channel where there you will find great videos, some of them more than worth our viewing time. So dear friends and family, I thank you and great big hugs and love always. The rest of this video will be for Mr. Obama. Thanks guys. Mr. Obama, it has been a while since I did a video to you. And I see from the headlines and alternative news articles that you have been quite active. I know that whatever it is that you've been doing or are planning on doing uh, are based on your reasoning. You have your reasons, no doubt. I wish to say up front that I'm not seeking an explanation for why you do what you do, or to challenge you in any way, shape, or form for anything that you do. However, I would like to bring just a couple things into light in hopes that perhaps it will give uh, you time and opportunity to give some thought to a disturbing feeling that is flowing out here in America. You may even find that what I have to say is not far off from what every other American is thinking and wishing to say to you as well. First, I'd like to say that I was totally disappointed that you did not take me up on my Idaho barbecue invitation. We were quite sincere. It would have been nice to at least have gotten a rejection letter or an email from yourself or the First Lady letting us know that you would not be here. Not to worry, though. Your portions were certainly not wasted. We do have a couple teenagers in the house, and with teenagers in the house, leftovers do not go to waste. The dinner was something that you really would have enjoyed, I think. It was a great meal. It turned out very, very good. The GMO corn was a little bit hard to digest. The steak, however, was awesome. 
cooked to perfection. Makes my mouth water just thinking back about it. Haven't had steak since. Prices, you know. Secondly, and more importantly, sir, with all due respect, what are you thinking? I mean, really, what are you thinking? Benghazi and the wrongdoings of the IRS being taken so lightly by you. Really? You called the reports that the Internal Revenue Service targeted conservative groups outrageous and went on to make light of the whole mess. You called it a sideshow and a circus. You went on to say regarding Benghazi and these reports that there's, and I quote you, there's no there there. Listening to you speak about the whole mess really made me, made me shake my head and speak aloud. What are you thinking, Mr. President? Shocked at how you could possibly think that the citizens of America are not paying attention and that this is something that can be swept out under the elephant dung of your own circus is a bit much. We are listening, you see, Mr. President. We are watching, and yes, sir, we, the American people, are paying attention. You have made us sit up and pay attention all by yourself by your own actions you have awakened many slumbering Americans we are very focused today and we are paying close attention for that I thank you With all the deceptions and the so-called drills that have been taking place across America and that have taken so many lives, we can't help, sir, but to pay attention. Let us go back for a minute to your first election, if you don't mind, sir to the time when you were campaigning and the massive crowds of people watching and listening as you spoke of change and of making promises that brought tears to the faces of the people that were so drained of hope. You fed them with a chant over and over. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. You spoke so smoothly as if you knew the way to make things better for all, promise after promise. Not a dry eye in the crowd, hearts racing. The people saw what they thought would be the greatest hero of all American history. Thinking about that for just a minute, sir, I ask you, what a legacy, what a legacy could you have left had you kept those promises? Had you truly been the hero If you had been at all sincere, sir. 
In the first four years, the hope was dashed, as one by one your false promises came into light, and not one was kept. I know that was before your second election, and what was done is done, or is it? You know, sir, again, with all due respect, what are you thinking? What is it that makes you make light of such severe inquiries and accusations? How can you make light of this? How can you? You are not on the road to heroism like the four that died in the Benghazi terrorist attacks. Yes, I said terrorist attacks. Even though we do not know who the real terrorists are, do we? Do we, Mr. President? You are not the hero that the little children in the Sandy Hook school massacre are today, nor are you the hero of those that suffered in the Boston Marathon are. You are not the hero like our heroes in uniform that do your dirty biddings in wars that should not be. You are not a hero at all. In fact, sir, again, with all due respect, and the key word is due respect, your integrity is proving to be that of a mob boss and not sincerely for the people who stood and cried thinking that you were in some way going to be a savior for America. You have let them down. You have let us all down. Each and every one of us. What, sir, are you thinking? Really? You could have been the hero. Yes, sir. You certainly could have been the greatest hero. You could have kept each promise. You could have found the truth and shared it freely. Truth that we know you know. Yes, sir, we do know. However, you have failed miserably, and now we are faced with a choice to continue trusting your charm and smooth dialect or face that we the American people have made a serious mistake in placing our trust in someone that thinks when heroes are murdered or government officials lie in courts and in hearings over and over covering up for one another while committing crimes against the people, not excluding stealing money from the American taxpayers just because they can, and then condoning the theft during some of the hardest economic times in history through defending the act of thievery, even by dismissing it as a circus or a sideshow, saying there is no, they're there when proof is everywhere. Well, sir, what are you thinking? Really, that we will stand in front of you with tears of hope running down our cheeks again, sir? Is that what you think? Remember, I said we're paying attention. We are paying 
attention. No tears today, sir. No tears. No. We have lost all hope where you are concerned, Mr. Obama. And you, sir, could have been the hero with a great legacy. However, you chose to refer to these important issues as nothing more than, and I quote you, sir, a political sideshow. What, Mr. Obama, have you been thinking? Really, I will say this, as an American, through and through, I can speak here only for myself. However, I will venture to say, and I think many Americans will agree, you, sir, are no hero in America. Heroes, you see, sir, have integrity, like all the soldiers that have died in nonsense wars. The children that have died. Yes, sir. The children had integrity. The runners that day in Boston that died. The 3,000 that died on 9-11. And let us not forget the four that laid their lives on the line and died in our American Embassy safe house in Benghazi. And so many more, so many more war victims not a circus, Mr. Obama. No, sir. Not a circus. How pathetic this is that you would stand before the people and dare use the word circus under these circumstances. With that, sir, I bid you good day. But I will leave you with this thought of hope from the mouths of the American people. May the truth pour from every corner like honey from its cone. Good day, Mr. Obama.